Hey, I'm Gavin. And I'm Blake. Welcome back to Bowties and Ballistics, and today we have a 2014 Chevy Silverado. This Chevy Silverado is LTZ trim level. It's a non-Z71. It also has a Z60 suspension package, so it's a little bit shorter. It's supposed to be the sport suspension package for this track. The exterior is finished in summit white, and the interior is gray leather. The 2014 Silverado has a nice boxy exterior, and with the LTZ, you get some nice chrome trim. You can tell that this is a 14 or a 15 because the rear taillights on the 14 to 15s are different from the 16 to 18 trucks, as well as the hood and front fascia. As you can see, the uh, 16 to 18 trucks have like kind of two little like kind of bulges there, and it has a totally different grille, and they have uh, LED running lights. The interiors from the 14 to 18 trucks are largely the same. You get Apple CarPlay on some of those. Uh, heated seats in this one. This truck has about 89,000 miles. It's a pretty good example. Of course, as far as aftermarket accessories, we have the fuel filler door, which was actually installed uh, at the dealership when it was new. It has a chrome exhaust tip. And if you're really feeling like it, it has the kicker 10 inch subwoofer from General Motors. Highly recommend. It makes the whole experience a lot better. Very nice. Very nice. It's a 200 watt 10 inch sub, and then it has a 200 watt amplifier under the dash to power all the other speakers. Really wakes up the dash speakers, makes it sound good. This truck has stock exhaust, so it is a. Uh, quiet. She's stealthy. Very stealthy. That's a good way of putting it. But yeah, very nice. <laughs> Powering the Silverado is a 5.3 liter L83 V8, making 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet of torque. Down there is a 6L86 speed transmission. Well, setting off on our review in the 2014 Silverado, Due to the cold weather, we're going to conduct this review from inside the truck. That is a good idea. It's a little chilly out. Yeah, so where do you think we should start with the uh, Silverado? Well, how about the motor and transmission combo in this rig? Yeah, so we already mentioned that it has a 5.3, which 355 horsepower in the today's day and age doesn't sound like a ton, but actually it's pretty good. You know, uh, the six speed is pretty smooth. You know, you usually don't have any like weird shifts. Uh, you know, especially at 89,000 miles, I would hope it wouldn't. Right, but yeah. As far as the rest of the drivetrain goes, I really like the four wheel drive system in this truck. It doesn't seem like it, uh, it's just pretty smooth when you have it in four high. Right. And then having a G80 is always nice. You never know when you're gonna need to spin both tires at the same time. <laughs> Right, it's a lot nicer than a Ford rear end of my experience. Anyways, that could be. Yeah, this is Gavin's rig, so he just had a lot more seat time in it. But I've driven it a few times, and I've definitely liked it. And one thing that I thought was a little weird when I first started driving it was the uh, throttle response is a lot different than like a Ford F-150 of the same model year stuff like that but yeah it's definitely like a little more towards the back of the pedal it's just something we gotta get used to once we're used to it it's not bad yeah but, uh, yeah plus i mean yeah this has a v8 so right, right. Yeah, that means that it sounds good <laughs> didn't even wrap it out through that gear very nice no the LS always has good power definitely enough to pass people tow right you know. a lot more intake noise than my old 9953 that's for sure yeah but yeah as far as gas mileage this truck you know you're kind of looking at 
well in town. I've been driving it a lot more in town lately. So it's been averaging like 15. So, you know, pretty average for a full size pickup. But if you go on the highway, I've seen up to 20. But I mean, the only way you're gonna get like, I've gotten like 23 or four at one point, you know, over like 30 miles. But that was, you know, with the wind at my back. So it's right, always handy. Right. But Let's talk about the uh, active fuel management experience with that uh yeah well i'm not a big fan of it especially for reliability purposes but it's definitely smoother than the gmt 900 trucks that came before it uh, i mean i notice it when i'm driving uh, what do you think do you you've never noticed it the few times i've driven it i've never noticed it kick in and out it's really smooth i think and i don't really look at the dash so i don't really see when it's in the four V8 and just press on the throttle and she goes. And <laughs> that's all I care about. But. Yeah. No, that's a good point. But yeah, another thing about these trucks, especially, uh, I'm not sure if the suspension package really helps with that, but it really does handle like like a car. It's you know, yeah. very tight steering. You know, if you turn the wheel just a little bit, you know, we're really moving across the lane. So this is electronic yeah there's yes I think that is really handy because in any other vehicle it seems like you got a little bit of slack in, in the middle yeah steering wheel and this thing seems like it just moves at the very touch that you can put so yeah nice. I, I really like but that especially for a well style. now 10 year old pickup right. so yeah. Um, what are some things that you maybe don't like? Well, that throttle pedal is one of my things that I really kind of dislike because I'm not used to it personally. It's not my daily driver, but I'm sure if I was driving it, I'd get used to it plenty. But um, interior is really nice. I do like that. Everything seems like it's tight in place. Nothing's rattling, you know, <laughs> that is very nice. Yeah, that wasn't uh, quite nice, but well, oh well, you know. <laughs> but uh, just people littering, <laughs> <laughs> right? Very nice. Uh, not really. Yeah, I would say that this truck was definitely made for the highway. Driving it in town is not that fun, to be honest. As far as like, you know, just stopping and going, and I, I don't know. It feels fine. I just don't like. I just don't like, you know. Right. Going, right. <laughs> you know, having it shift all the way up through like fourth and then stopping. And I just don't like stop and go traffic, anyways. But exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, it handles it fine. It's just, I really like it on the highway when you don't have to really worry about stopping. I do like the paint color, Summit White, I think is a superior. It's uh, white definitely color. better than uh, Iridescent Pearl Tri Coat. Right, right. But, Which. Uh, the only other complaint I would say for my personal preference on this truck is. I like the Z71s compared to this 60, what is that? Z60. Z60 package because I like them when they sit up a little higher in the front end, but that's just my preference. And I think that this package, the Z60, really does help it handle. This is one of the best handling rigs I've ever driven. Yeah, um, I like the Z71s as well, but I've never actually really been around one. And the only thing I don't like about the Z71s is they have a different grill. Instead, and right, I like this grill right. better. I like the just chrome honeycomb instead of the, it's kind of like a crossbar, I think, on the LTZ Z71 trucks. Right, the honeycomb grill does make this truck pop. I like it. Yeah, it's actually like super identifiable. I mean, you really, you know, you can't really go anywhere in this truck. If somebody knows <laughs> your truck, you can't really go anywhere because it just, it definitely like sits different right. than most of the other trucks, but yeah, um, I wish this truck had the integrated uh, brake controller over here on my left. That would be handy. Right, right. It does not, so I mean, oh, well, I guess there's not really much we can do about that, but it, I mean, for me, I've towed with it a few times, but like, I've never really needed it, so luckily it hasn't really mattered to me, but I could see where that would be something that'd be nice to have, but the, it is offered. Right, right. Because I've never driven a 6.2 truck 
That would be great. In this, you know, <laughs> body style, so I can't really compare apples to oranges between the five tree and the six two. But well, you can't say no to an extra seventy horsepower, almost right, sixty five right. if you want to be technical. But well, no, this thing definitely has plenty of power for daily driving. Yeah, an another great thing is it's definitely quiet. You know, we're not using our microphones right now, right, so right. it's very quiet. You know, if you're gonna go on a road trip, it's nice. These heated seats are nice because I'm cold. Right. Oh okay. yeah. But yeah. Some other decent features this thing has. I do like the power back window. That's kind of nice. Um, especially, really, it's more. That's more of a summer thing. You know, <laughs> definitely not right now. But it's nice if you're driving down the highway and you just want to air it out. I just don't mind the John Deere units in the background. Yeah, it'd be nice to review that <laughs> S770. Oh yeah. See what we can do with it. But. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, another nice thing is I like the backup camera on this truck. Um, I don't know, don't really, you know, if you know how to use your mirrors, you know, that's fine too. Because <laughs> right. that's what I do most of the time. Right. And also these mirrors tilt down, which I know a lot of vehicles do that, but you can configure that in the screen. Um, yeah, that's handy. But no, it is handy. The backup camera is nice when you're backing up like within a couple inches of, you know, another vehicle or if you're, you know, hooking up to a trailer. Yeah. But yeah. It speeds things up quite a bit. Yeah, it definitely does. Another thing that I like about this thing is the infotainment is really, really nice right right uh, as far as definitely like being easy to use and it works every time uh -huh. and I like the you know the digital in the middle of the gauges you know it has a I think that's like a 4.2 inch display over here uh, uh -huh. you know you can kind of look at everything you want you know trans temp uh, trip odometer fuel economy but I just leave it on the speed of course right, right. makes it handy over to audio a little bit so this truck is not a Bose truck yeah but uh, talk to us about what you did up here with the back of the GM subwoofer yeah so I believe part number 1930 uh, is the factory upgrade kit there's like 3118 I think is just the subwoofer but 3117 has a 200 extra 200 amp like it's a digital sound processor and amplifier, so it's supposed to like make the door speakers sound better. Uh, I couldn't really find any good reviews about that on YouTube when I was looking to buy one. I got it off of eBay, it was new in the box, I got it last year. And uh, basically, you know, you run some power wires through the firewall. There's a actually a decent little, uh, you know, it's basically where all the electrical you know the wires and the computers run through the firewall the rubber grommet yeah the rubber grommet and that makes it pretty e it's fairly easy it's still a little difficult but doable right right but uh yeah that just makes it a way like better experience for driving around it 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 didn't make it per se like that much louder i think it made the speakers louder Right, right. But it definitely, like, the the dash speakers are a lot louder now. The door speakers don't make as much bass, but that's intentional because you have a 10-inch subwoofer now. Right. And it sounds like, it sounds way better than a Bose track would. Oh, yeah. It provides a lot of bass. And I think after you did the upgrade, it really lit up these front speakers and the door speakers for sure. Made a lot more enjoyable to listen to music. And the bass from that kicker is real nice. Yeah, climbing a hill here, and another nice thing is, it sounds good under load. Oh yeah, getting a little bit of throttle intake noise really is nice. Yeah, this truck, while rated for E85, does not like E85. So if yeah, you if you're looking to buy one of these, just don't put it in there. Um, maybe that's just uh, Casey's having terrible fuel. Right. Uh, right. Uh, it was supposed to be E85, and GM says you're, you're supposed to get like a 21 horsepower gain. So I was like, well, let's just see what it, what it'll do. And uh, flashing check engine light is what it'll do. 
So, <laughs> right, right. and then cold start rough idle is the code for that. So yeah, I really didn't like that. I couldn't burn that tank off fast enough. And it took me like another, basically, tank or two of gas before it was back to normal. Right, right. Other than that, um, repairs that have been done on this truck, oil changes. Um, the only other thing that was done is when I bought it, I bought it used, it had 60,000 miles on it. One of the door locks didn't work, and the trans oil cooling lines were seeping. Actually, they, was, they were leaking. But luckily, the dealership I bought it from replaced that. Yeah, and then nice. about 5,000 miles ago, these trucks have a auxiliary vacuum pump for the brakes because in four-cylinder mode, it doesn't create enough uh, you know, pressure. Vacuum. Yeah, vacuum to, you know, for the brakes when it's in four cylinder mode. So it's got that extra pump, it went out. Um, actually though, the GM covers that under warranty still. So I had that replaced at the local Chevy dealership for free. So that is handy. So basically I have uh, done oil changes, you know, fuel, and I think I put another air filter in it or two, and then the cabin air filter, of course. And then I've just driven it. How's that back pump recall part of the GM? Or is that just on the warranty? Is when we got that in place? Uh, that's a spe it's called like GM special coverage. It's just for that part. So it covers that individual part up to like 150,000 miles. And it's like, I'm still, like, if it were to go out again, I'm still under coverage for it. So that's handy. That is handy. But yeah, we're going 70 here. 1750 rpm so definitely i like that too that really makes it you know it's not a screamer on the highway this this truck does have 342 uh you know rear end so you know out of the options you can get you can get 308s 342s or a 373 uh, i would definitely recommend 342 or uh, 373 i've driven the tahoe with the 308s and for some reason, they have better, better throttle tuning in those. Like they're way more peppy, which is weird. Not not if you floor it though. If you floor it, this is faster. Right. right. So you know, I'll, I'll take that. Right. But so you prefer the three forty twos? Yeah, I don't know about three seventy threes. I don't know how many more RPM that would be turning on the highway. So right. if, it, if it wasn't that many more, then that'd be solid. But. I think this is a happy medium, especially if you're going to tow, the 373 would be the way to go. Right, right. This thing is a really good highway cruiser, though. Yeah. The low RPM, high speed is nice. So this truck is an is a 1LZ. You know, you can get a 1LZ and a 2LZ. So this one doesn't have, you know, of course it doesn't have the bow, as we mentioned. You know, it has the flip up, you know, bench seat, which I actually, the more I've thought about it, I prefer that. It's handy. Because... Well, mainly because I think the parking sensors on these trucks were ugly. <laughs> and, eh, I didn't need that. Right, you know, I, right. I know how to drive, so we're good to go there. <laughs> but, yeah, I like that, that it, actually it's not, because I think it gives it a little bit more of a cleaner look on the bumpers, front and rear. And I also, you know, it doesn't, so that way it, it also doesn't have, you know, like, lane keep or any of that other, like, more fancy stuff, which is a little unfortunate but i don't really miss that however it does have grade braking so when you're going downhill it will downshift which is cool is and it, especially if you're towing in tow haul mode it gets it like aggressive right and then if you're starting in reverse or drive doesn't matter on an incline it has a hill start assist that is nice so that's nice you can just let off the brake and it'll just hold you there automatically right. that's good mm -hmm. but yeah other than that i mean for a 10 year old pickup definitely solid if you guys yeah. are looking for one then if you can try to if you can find a clean one <laughs> they're good but i don't right. know there's right. the ones i've seen lately are uh keep them washed is what keep we're them washed yeah definitely do she that should be all right but. yeah like <laughs> 
we've crawled underneath this truck plenty just you know in the shop you know how it is you get a little curious <laughs> like last right. night before we filmed this we waxed it and we were crawling underneath it and it's clean you know you don't have really any rust problems and this truck came from i believe minnesota new and then it made its way to kansas city and then to me right but uh yeah i'm the third owner and i think if you wash them you don't have any issues but i've seen like i've seen some other trucks if you don't wash them yeah they could have they rust. yeah the the fenders in the back definitely rockers right not great the two main things you want to keep up on is oil changes washing yeah should be uh, good. as far as like big reliability problems with these um I think if you actually did maintenance, you shouldn't have anything totally unforeseen. The cylinder deactivation, right. I think the majority of the problems with that are people who like try to go like eight, nine K on an oil change. I think that really leads to those lifters don't like, they yeah, don't like that. They don't like oil. sludge. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely recommend change your oil. I do it like, I, you know, try to every 4,000, you know, 5,000, somewhere in there. I feel like that's pretty healthy. Right, right. But yeah, we'll give you guys a little view of the dash in here. So, yeah, there's the little screen I was talking about, and of course the big screen. Uh, a cool thing about the 2014s, kind of a little Easter egg, just for the 2014s, you can change the theme of your gauges and the screen. 2015 and up trucks, at least the 2500s that I've been around, you cannot Not change the screen. Mm -hmm. So I have mine in the Corvette mode. <laughs> you know, the 2014 to 19 Corvettes have that screen. So <laughs> I choose to feel like I'm cool. Right, right. So, yeah. Um, back seat room. Uh, it's definitely not as much as a Ford. You know, that's just a fact, but... right. It's definitely enough for like, you know, normal people. I could probably have this seat all the way back. I think I'd... I've definitely ridden in the back a few times and never had any comfort issues No, it's at all. fine. So... Oh yeah, memory seats. <laughs> That's handy. <laughs> right. So I do like that as well. Um, oh, another thing I like about this truck, as you can see down here, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but it has, you know, your 9 volt, but then it has you know, a classic, you know, home style charger, you know, wall, wall, yeah, mm -hmm. wall outlet, and that's handy. Oh, yeah. So any of, any of them should have that, I think. I think it, it doesn't matter if you get a, uh, like LT or work truck. Or if you have the center console, I don't think it matters. Oh, I see. But, yeah. Cool. Another good thing about these trucks is they have good HVAC. The heating and air mm -hmm. is excellent. Like if you want the like it to get it really hot, you can almost burn yourself if it's been running for like, right? You know, you know you're on the road, you know, for 30, 40 minutes, it'll get really hot, uh, and then the air conditioning gets really cold. Yep. So that's very nice. I can attest they are. It is real nice. It blows hard, and yes, it gets really nicely hot and cold. Yeah. Also, something but to look for in an LTZ. I like the stitching on the dash. The dash is just like, they have the slightly nicer dash in here. And I like the stitching. I think that kind of dresses it up, makes it look a little bit better. But fancy. Yeah. Another thing that's kind of, you know, that you wouldn't really think of, but these interior lights are all LED. That is nice. So that's nice. It's kind of weird because the exterior lights are not LED, but the puddle lights are. So the puddle lights underneath the mirrors are LED, which I'd assume is factory. I've swapped the tag lights to LED just because I think that looks better. Uh, I still have halogens, you know, for the, the rest of the bulbs. Right. But I really like the LEDs in here. Um, you know, the map lights are all LED, the back ones are. And then it has what I like to call a little mood light. So at night, there's a little light up here that just kind of stays on. And it's like very dim. But like if you put your hand down here, you know, you can still see your stuff. So I like that at night. Yeah. That is handy. Well, guys, I think that finishes up our review on the 2014 Silverado. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Like and subscribe.